Hey, it's Jim from Digital Anarchy. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to make great time lapses. Flickr Free, our plugin for a deflickering video, was actually designed for doing time lapse. It's something I do a lot, and I didn't find the tools out there to be all that great, so we came out with our own deflickering plugin, and that's Flickr Free. And it does a wonderful job of deflickering time lapses and lots of other stuff as well. But we just came out with Samurai Sharpen, which is a tool for sharpening video, and that's also very effective on time lapses. Quite frequently with time lapse, you have shots of cityscapes or landscapes where you've got a lot of distance between the camera and the subject. And so you can have a little bit of softness just because of that. And Samurai Sharpen does a great job of sharpening up the details and really making the, the video pop. And so we're gonna take a look at how to deep flicker video, how to sharpen it, and how to make some great looking time lapses. So come on and join me and we'll show you how to do it. Hey, it's Jim Tierney. And in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about creating time lapses that are razor sharp and flicker free. And to do that, we're gonna use a couple different plugins from Digital Anarchy, uh, Samurai Sharpen and Flicker Free. And in this case, we're gonna be using Adobe After Effects, but this works just as well in Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Avid, or any of the other host apps that Samurai Sharpen and Flicker Free work in. And what we're gonna do is take this original raw file sequence and turn it into this. This is a day to night time lapse. So in order to capture the lighting change, the camera had to be set to aperture priority. And since the light meter isn't perfectly consistent, this causes the exposure to vary a little bit and you end up with flicker. And you can see Flicker Free does a great job of solving that problem. So let's take a look at how it works. Flicker Free was actually designed for time lapse. And the default preset is exactly that, time lapse. And these settings are settings that we found work really well for the vast majority of time lapses out there, particularly day to night time lapses, but it'll work for pretty much anything. So once you apply Flickr Free, you really shouldn't have to fiddle with this too much. You might want to change the time radius to 10. You might want to increase the threshold to 100. Uh, these are some minor tweaks, but overall these settings should work out just fine for you. Now, what Flickr Free is doing is analyzing up to 21 different frames. And in this case, we have time radius set to eight. And what this means is that Flickr Free is analyzing eight frames prior to the current frame, eight frames after the current frame, and the current frame itself for a total of 17 frames to figure out what the correct luminance should be for any given frame, or the current frame, as the case may be. So this means that even though it's very easy to set up Flickr free for time lapse, there is some rendering time involved. Now, one big key thing that slows down renders is applying Flickr free to really large images. So if you're delivering at HD, as we are here, this is an HD clip, and say you shot your image sequence with a Canon 5D Mark IV, which is what we did, you don't want to apply Flickr Free to the original sequence because the original sequence is 6,700 pixels by about 4,500 pixels. And that's huge, especially if we only want to render out HD for our final deliverable. Because as you can imagine, if After Effects or any other host app has to load 17 6700 by 4500 pixel images, that's going to slow things down. So what we've done is created a HD comp and we're applying Flickr Free to just that comp, which is HD, which means that Flickr Free is only analyzing 1920 by 1080 pixel images. Now you can even take this one step further and render this out as an intermediary file to some high quality codec like ProRes or even H.264 at 100%. And that's gonna make it go even faster. So only applying Flickr Free to the resolution that you're gonna deliver at is a pretty key thing to cutting down render times. Whether it's HD or 4K or whatever, maybe, it, maybe you are delivering at the full resolution of the 5D Mark IV and that's great. But if not, then either pre-comp it or do an intermediary render and that'll speed things up pretty significantly. So now that we've deflickered this time lapse, let's move to the next step, which is sharpening it. So let's zoom in a bit. And this is a close-up view of Tokyo Tower with the 5D image sequence almost at full res. 
Now it's cropped because of course the comp is only HD, but before we pre-comped it, we didn't really scale it down. So this is the, an HD section of the original frame. Now as such, it's a little bit soft, looks reasonably sharp, but as with any cityscape, not everything's gonna be completely in focus. And in this case, we're doing this in the middle of a rainstorm. And so there's a lot of mist in the air. And so that softened things up a little bit as well. And so you can see that when we apply Samurai Sharpen, it's really gonna make this pop. So we can turn it off, turn it on, off, on. And so that's really improving the sharpness of the clip. And like any sharpen filter, the amount sets the overall amount of sharpening. The radius kind of sets how small or large of a detail you want to sharpen. And 1.5 is a pretty good value for this. You might want to go with one, you might want to go with two, but in this case, we're going to stick with 1.5. And the edge mass strength is set to the default, which allows us to not sharpen noise, compression artifacts, stuff like that, which we really don't want sharpened. And in fact, you can see what edges are being sharpened if we turn on show sharpening. So that's a very nifty feature to allow you to see exactly what's being sharpened. And if we turn the edge mass strength to zero, you can see we get a lot more edges being sharpened, but we are probably also gonna get some noise and other stuff that we don't necessarily want. So somewhere between zero and 10 is good. In this case, I'm gonna set it to two. And that's usually enough to just filter out the noise. And again, this is a very high quality image sequence. Again, shot with a 5D Mark IV. If I was shooting this with a regular video camera, which tends to have a little bit more noise than the 5D, I would probably have edge mass strength set to five or 10. So I'll turn off show sharpening. And the last thing that I've done here is turn the blend highlight opacity down to 60. Now what this is gonna do is reduce the sharpening on the highlight areas. Now in this frame, it's really not that big of a deal, but if I jump forward a little bit to where we've got the full night scene going on, if I have the highlight opacity set to 100, we're starting to see some of the highlights really blown out. And so this allows us to dial that back just a little bit. It reduces the sharpening on the highlight side, which should bring back a little bit of the detail in some of these areas that are getting kind of blown out. And so that's all there is to sharpening and deflickering time lapses. We have a lot more tutorials on digitalanarchy.com, including a lot on Samurai Sharpen, which go over these controls and these controls in detail, as well as the mask controls, which I did not use for this clip. It's a very powerful way of doing sharpening for video. But we have a lot more tutorials on that and on Flickr Free and all of our video plugin products at digitalanarchy.com. And we also have free filters and all sorts of good stuff over there. So definitely head over there and check it out. And thanks for joining me and I'll